So, Adobe Premiere. <clears throat> So you want to create a new project, we'll call it Boathouse. I'll save it on the, on the desktop, like so, in its own folder. Uh, and then you can just click OK for the rest. Um, this is the Premiere interface. So we have two viewers, here is one is the the first viewer and this is the second viewer. One is just to look at clips from the browser and, and clips properties. And this one is to look at what is going on in the timeline. And this is the timeline here at the bottom. And here I have effects and, and different things. And you can change uh, the interface by clicking on these tabs here at the top. So I'm actually gonna go back to editing. So you can see the FX tab has gone away and I have a little bit more room now to work on my edits. So I'm going to bring some, um, some clips and um, to do this I'm just going to double click on this import media window here. I'm going to go to my uh, media folder, videos and I'm going to import all these videos. Now, if I double click on one of these videos, it loads into the viewer and I can watch it. And you can press space bar to start watching it. And this is the clip of just me standing and looking, uh, looking away. And what you, what you wanna do now is um, just select the pieces of the clip which are interesting. So for example, me walking to the background is not interesting, I don't want it. I want this moment here where I look out uh, away. So I'm going to insert an in point and you can press I on the keyboard and you can see now this is my the start of my clip and then you can keep uh, scrolling or playing the clip until the end of what you want to use and press O like out and you see now my in and out points have been defined and now I can take this clip and drag it into the uh, timeline and this is going to create a new project make sure that when you do this, with the first clip you do this, that you use your um, high quality clip. Like if you have some pictures and if you have maybe something that you shot with a webcam, make sure that the shot you put in first is what you shot on your phone or on your DSLR camera. Because the first clip you put in the timeline is going to define the quality of your video. So if I go into sequence settings, from sequence menu to sequence settings, you can see that now my timeline has a 24 frame per second base, is um, uh, 3,800, uh, well, 38,040 by uh, 2160 uh, pixels. And that's all, everything has been taken from this clip. So then I can go back to here and you can see that the clip which was, <coughs> sorry, which was inserted is just the length of what I've selected. And now I'm gonna do this with, uh, with every, every, um, every clip I've, uh, I've uh, gathered. So I'm just gonna scroll through this and then find the moments that uh, I like. So maybe from here to here, out point, and I'm gonna put it here. Uh, you can rearrange clips in your timeline so you can move this back and then you can move this in front of it and keep going down I like this in point ah, that's not good camera move so yeah maybe I'll start my in point here instead and I'll stop here and again I can drag it I think you can command click it yeah, there is some faster way to do it. Ah, yeah, th these buttons here will... Okay, so comma will insert the clip where your playhead is. So if your playhead is is here, you can just hit insert and it's going to put the clip in the timeline. So if you have a lot of clips, that's faster. And I'm going to go here and do the same thing. So 
So I highly advise you to not do any camera moves, to keep the camera still, uh, take some tape, glue, uh, put it against a glass so it really doesn't move. Um, because it makes your editing much easier and also it makes the, the video much easier to read. Try, if you need to show a space, um, maybe do two shots instead of a camera move. Um, this is because camera moves are complicated to do smoothly. Uh, especially when you work with a scale model, everything is so small that the smallest shake of your hand uh, will translate to some very blurry and hard to read video. So it's much better to have something move in your frame. And this is why the whole tutorial today is called moving pictures. And I'm not saying move the pictures, but have movement in your pictures rather than to have a camera move. At least at this level, it's m much easier to, to show something without the camera move. So I'll bring this here and you can see the timeline has many levels so you can overlap things but the play and the playhead will always play the topmost clip. So here I'm saying this but if I put my playhead here I'm gonna see this clip here and the clip below is gonna be hidden like um, um, layers in Photoshop. And then here I have my small uh, time lapse I did of, uh, of the foot drying on concrete and uh, I'm gonna take my in point from here and out point here and I'm gonna drag this in the timeline as well. So now we're gonna start editing. Um, so I think my first shot is this. I have to actually look in the movie. Where is it? Here. Yeah, that's the first shot. Then we have this, then we have the food, then we have this. Okay, so. I'm gonna bring this all the way here against the beginning. If you don't, you have a black uh, bit at the beginning. So you really wanna push it to the, against the, the, the end here. And I'm gonna put my, um, my, my uh, second shot. Then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the, this guy. If you want to resize the timeline, you can take this, so the scroll bar here slides the timeline around. And if you need to zoom in and out, you can hold this little circle here and then drag it. And you see it resizes the timeline, it zooms out. So now I can see all my, uh, all my clips. I can move them around. Okay, so then I'm gonna put this guy here, like this. And I'm gonna put this guy here, like so. Huh? So now I have the order of what I want to, to show, but the timing is not good. So for example, if I start here, yeah, this would be okay. Maybe this is a bit too long. And here we see we have two problems. First of all, even if I film this with the timeline time lapse function on the phone, it is still way too slow and then it's too small because the time lapse on at least iPhones um, take a smaller video than the full resolution video. If you want to do a time lapse, you can just also film a 10 minutes video and then shorten it. So this is what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to right click on the video and then I'm going to go down in the menu and go speed duration. <clears throat> and I can either uh, give a percentage of speed increase or decrease or a final duration. And here I'm going to enter five seconds. <coughs> Excuse me, and click OK. And you can see that now my clip is much shorter. Then I can move this back here. <coughs> and then here my final shot is way too long. I don't want it to last for so long. So I can put the mouse at the end of it and then just make it shorter, like so. So now you see this yellow bar here at the top it says that my clips have been uh, imported but not rendered. So they're still a bit slow on the playback. And depending on the, the computer speed, it can struggle to read the, the video. So here I'm already playing at half size. So full means full resolution and one eighth mean one eighth of the resolution of the video. It's not the size, it's just the sampling of the video. 
and this is just for editing it doesn't matter on your final output so if your your computer is too slow just bring it down to one eighth and it's gonna pl the playback is gonna be faster but the final export is gonna be high resolution here you can adjust the zoom of the of the video so usually just leave it with fit I'm gonna go back to half and then to render the video you want to press the return key on your keyboard the enter key uh, sorry that's for playback huh okay I ah, know that's uh, sorry that's in um, that's in after effect so actually here we don't need to render it's okay um, Okay, here we have a problem, it's not zoomed in. So to zoom this clip in, just select it, double click on it, so it's gonna load into the uh, left viewer, and then go to effect control. And then you see here all the, the things you can change about this clip, and here I want to zoom in. So I'm just gonna click on this number and then drag right, click and drag. And you can see now it's zoomed the, the clip. And I see it's about 200%, so I'm just gonna say 200. There we go. Um, okay, so now I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the basic editing. Um, there is one more thing I'd like to do with this clip is that it's shaking a little bit. You can see it goes, it's going up and down a little bit. So I want, to be, I want it to be really still, like if the camera was really on a tripod and didn't move. So to do this, I'm going to add an effect and you can do this within Premiere. I'm going to go to the FX tab and I'm going to search for stabilizer. I'm going to take the wrap stabilizer and I'm going to drag it onto this clip here. And it's going to say, oh, I can't use this wrap stabilizer because you've uh, made this clip faster. So I'm going to do this in After Effects then. So how to go to After Effects? You can right click on, on your clip and then you can say uh, replace with After Effects composition. And what this is gonna do is that it's going to create an After Effects file and open it in After Effects. And whatever you edit in After, After Effects will be brought back in Premiere. So now I just did this, it opens After Effects and right away it says, hey, you have to save this first. So. I'm going to go back to my file and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is my boat house after effect file. And here I have my premiere file. So Photoshop editing level premiere. One thing which is special with video is that these files do not contain the video files. The video files are still my video files in here. They're always reference. So once you've started editing, you should not you can, but you should not move these files and you should not, especially not delete them because then Premiere and After Effects will not be able to uh, find them again. So back here, save my After Effects composition. It opens the clip. After Effects is similar to Premiere. Uh, you have uh, your list of files here. You have here a more complex timeline and then you have your effects here. So if I scroll through, through this, I can see the shakiness and uh, I want to uh, add my stabilizer. So I'm gonna come to the FX tab, search for wrap stabilizer. And there we go. And then just drag and drop it onto the clip here. And now it's gonna analyze the clip. By analyzing the clip, it looks at the shakiness of the clip and you can see it's going here 1%, 2%. And then at the end of it, it's gonna say, okay, this is, um, it's, it's gonna find the movement and then stabilize it. So I can let this run and I can go back to Premiere. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is now uh, start, uh, <laughs> what can we do? We can import the sound clips. So you can't hear the sound of my computer, but you have to believe me that these are actual sound files. Uh, and I'm gonna take this guy, which I've already prepared, and bring it in Premiere. So again, just drag and drop. And the, the sound timeline is the bottom half of the timeline. These are sound tracks and these are video tracks, huh? V, A, audio. So I'm just gonna put my sound here and I don't want to um, hear the sound, the, video, the sound of the video uh, I have um, recorded because it's just like the sound of the house and stuff I don't want. So I'm just gonna mute this channel. And now I can only hear what I have recorded as my soundtrack. 
And now I've recorded everything together, so I need to split this in, uh, in small, small pieces. And you can't really see the sound wave because it's really small, but yeah, now you can, you can see it. So I want to split this in, in many pieces. So I'm just gonna come here and then uh, tell the, the program to split this, um, this clip. And the split button is, um, I don't know where it is, but I know that it's Command K on the keyboard and Control K on uh, Windows. So if you hit Control K, you can see that now where the playhead was, I have a, I have a split and I can do this now for every piece of my sound. And um, this is the second sound I want, and this is maybe the first sound I want, and then, then I want this wind sound until the end. And then this, uh, this guy here is, yeah, it's also some, some wind sound, but a little bit different. So I'm gonna overlap it with the two first sounds. So you can compose different sounds. You can have someone speaking maybe in the background and then you can have a wind sound and you want the wind sound to last for longer than the other sound. And by doing this, you can, for example, play with the inside and outside effect. So when you're outside, maybe you hear the wind and then when you show a shot of inside, you only hear um, the sound of a cafe and some cups and hitting each other. So you can really, with the sound, show where you are and what's the atmosphere. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go back to After Effects and now my uh, stabilizer has finished analyzing. <coughs> And now it has the stabilization result is smooth motion and smooth motion is going to keep a little bit of motion when I move, but I want this to be actually completely still. So I'm going to say I want no motion and this is going to make it that the camera will be completely fixed. This only works if your initial footage is already quite stable. If you have camera move, you want to keep smooth motions. Okay. This is good, I'm gonna save it. And now if I go back to uh, Premiere and hit return, and now it works, it's gonna render because you see it's red here, now it's green, it's been rendered. And if I play this back, um, you probably can't see it on the team viewer because it's a bit choppy, but now it's perfectly stable. You see, it doesn't move up and down anymore. <clears throat> okay, so now for some actual rotoscoping. Again, we want to do this in After Effects, so I right-click on, on my clip and I say send this to After Effects, so uh, replace with uh, After Effects composition. It's going to send it to After Effects and you can see now I have two clips open. One is this external shot and one is the footstep, so they're both saved into the same file. I, I can work on them separately. So now we want to import our background. So I'm going to go back to my um, files and I'm going to say I want um, background and I want this guy and I bring it back to After Effects and I drop it in the timeline. And now my pictures, picture is on top of the, of the video file, so I'm just going to drag it below it. It disappeared and now I need to cut out this. And to do this, we're going to use the uh, rotoscope uh, tool. So you select the, the clip and then you have to open it into a layer editing mode. So you have to double click on it. And it doesn't change much, but now you have this small timeline here with a, pre, a previous um, uh, pre-selection element here. So double click on it, we're in layer mode. Once we're here, we can take the uh, Roto Brush tool. It's this little tool here. And this tool is really simple. If uh, you paint with it, if you click and keep clicking, it will paint a green line and you just go around on what you want to keep. So I want to keep these guys and this until here. And it's going to look at the picture and you see now there's this pink outline and this is, uh, this is the cutout. So it's already done. I already have uh, this cutout. The thing is now we need to do this for every frame of this clip. So we, <clears throat> the way it works is that you start at the center of your clip. You see how my playhead is now at the center of uh, my 11 second clip. We do this because 
the, the, the way this roto tool works is that it needs to go one frame at a time. So if you start here at the first frame, you have to go in one direction until the end. And, and, like, and like if you start at the middle, you just go forward and backward a little bit, and it's a little bit easier to, to handle. So now I'm going to move a couple of frames forward by clicking and you can see now this tiny blue line is moving forward. And you can see here my outline is still good so I can move a couple more frames. I'm going to see how it looks. So you can see this green line is moving forward and this is uh, After Effects analyzing the frames and trying to see where to keep this, uh, this purple line. So we have to wait a little bit about uh, with this. Okay, and now if I scrub through it, you can see that my uh, rotoscoping works quite well. It's following this element here, which is moving the, the shade, uh, the tent is moving up and down and my, my pink outline is moving with it. So that's really good. I'm quite confident it's going to work for the rest of the clip. So we're not going to, we're not going to render everything. Um, once it's um, once it's uh, you you saw that it works that you don't have any errors you can hit the freeze button and the freeze button is going to lock the propagation of the um, the roto uh, cutout so it's going to say okay now this looks good I want to keep it like this and it's gonna it's gonna uh, make um, make a final cut out of it and then you can use it. So it takes a minute. Yes. Um, it's no, it's the same process. It's easier if the camera is still, but the um, the roto tool will 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 try to follow the object you're trying to cut out so so yeah it's much easier like you're making it much easier on yourself by keeping the camera still you you can move it's you can move the camera it's no problem but if you work like this example with a real object, um, a scale model, it's really, really hard to get um, stable camera movement without using stabilization, without using some fancy tripod gear stuff. So if you have a, a camera tripod, which can move and make very stable uh, movement, um, then it's, it's, it's okay. But um, making smooth camera moves with a small camera is very, very hard. And then, yeah, I, I mean, you, you, can, you can try. Please try it. It's, it's also the whole idea behind this tutorial is to go a little bit outside of the usual conventional uh, computer rendering uh, way. It's to do something a little bit different, which has more character. So try to make the camera move, but it adds a lot of complexity very quickly. 
So first try to do a couple of still shots and just animate things in the, in the shot. Uh, like here I use the wind and it makes the, it makes the, the, the tent move and I use the water reflection uh, to show that we're by the lake and this kind of things. Uh, and then if you're comfortable with this, then you can start to do camera moves. For the rotoscoping part, it should still be okay because this example doesn't really show it, but it will, it will, keep, the, it will keep following your object even if the camera, mo camera moves. Um, okay, so now it, f it finished freezing the, the, the frame. And if we go back to the timeline view, so I'm going to close this layer now and uh, have a look at this, we can see that now we can see the background. Uh, and this is because now this movie has the roto brush effect applied to it. Uh, now I'm in layer mode, I close this guy and I'm back in the timeline mode. And now I can see the picture which is behind it. So now I see a couple of problems. Perspective doesn't match. So uh, what we want to do is select the, uh, the photo. And uh, once we've selected the photo, okay, I have the wrong tool, so I want to go back to the mouse tool here. Uh, I can move the I can move the photo, and uh, it's not uh, horizontal, so I want to rotate it. And you can come here and open the transform um, information and you have rotation. And then here you can rotate the picture until it's horizontal. Uh, and then I'm going to drag it until I like it. Uh, maybe something like this looks okay perspective wise. Um, my videos, no, no, it looks okay. Um, now what I want is this deck to stop on this edge here. So I'm going to come on the video uh, layer and I'm going to just do a cutout of this uh, element. To move around the composition, you can uh, hold uh, Option or Alt on your keyboard and then use the mouse scrolling wheel to zoom in and out. And then by pressing Spacebar, you get the hand to move the composition around. So now I zoomed out a little bit and um, I'm going to select the uh, pen tool and then I'm just gonna paint this guy out like this and um, what, it, uh, what it has done is that it has put this mask on the wrong layer. You see it's on my image layer but actually, I oh know it's correct, sorry, it's on the video layer, it's correct. So what I want to do now is say, okay, this selection has to be a cutout. And to do so, um, you need to come uh, here and make sure you have your mask option enabled. So expand or collapse the transfer control pane, this little guy here. Um, and then you can uh, select uh, this guy here. No, sorry. Let me find it. Mode. Which one is it? Is this guy? No, it's not this guy. I, I learned After Effects three days ago, so I'm still not completely an expert. Ah, yeah. Nope. Uh, okay, it doesn't work. So I'm just going to delete this guy and what I'm going to do another technique which I know works. I'm just going to create a new... Um, Hmm. Let me try something. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what I did is instead of creating the shape inside the um, the movie layer, I just created a new shape. So now it's it's on top. Huh? So I'm gonna do this again just so it's so it's clear. I'm gonna delete it. So I have nothing selected here, and then I create. I take the pen tool and then I just draw this shape like this. And then I'm going to come in my video layer and I'm, ah, there we go. You see the, the, the mat, the target mat uh, thing has come now. And now it says alpha inverted mate shape layer one. Shape layer one is this guy I've created. So I want to say, hey, use this as a transpar transparency object. And then boom, it's going to select my shape and then it's going to make it disappear. And then you can come back, select the shape and still edit it. So you can come like this and uh, you can still, well, 
change it. There we go. Change it like this and change the cropping. And maybe actually I want this to be cropped here. It doesn't look so good. It looks like the wood is very thin. So I'm going to come back here to the edge here and say that's good. Um, one last thing I want to do is to change the background. Right now the background is a little bit too bright and popping out. So I want to make it a little bit more desaturated. So I'm going to come here and open the color correction tab and uh, come to um, uh, the exposure. There we go. Or hue saturation is better. And then drag this on top of the of the picture. <clears throat> and then now I can say, hey, I want this a little bit more desaturated so it's not as popping as my main element. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit more light as well because when you take pictures, things which are in the background are always a little bit uh, lighter, kind of uh, atmospheric perspective, perspective. And this is just really basic. And okay, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna save, go back to Premiere. And then I can see that in Premiere, my clip has updated and I can see now my composition. And you can see it's red because it needs to be rendered. So you can hit return on your keyboard and it's gonna bring the rendering window and it's gonna render this, uh, this little bit here. And uh, now it's going to play properly. Uh, one thing that maybe you can improve is you can see if I zoom in here, you see the edge is a little bit not so clean. It has a little, uh, little teeth. And the setting to do okay. this, hello Siri. Um, the setting to do this is uh, here in the composition, um, you would come onto the, um, the video clip, open the effect tab into the rotor brush. Huh? The rotor brush is what we've, uh, we've cut out. And you can say, um, <laughs> fine tune auto uh, rotor brush mate, it's on brush mate, there we go. So rotor brush mate and then increase the feather by a little bit. The feather makes the edge a bit blurry. So if you make it a very high amount, you can see you start to have a very blurry edge, but maybe something like uh, 30 will be, will be more appropriated. And you see now it's a bit blurry and it's not as a hard edge as before. Okay, that's good. So onto the next shot. Same story, right click on it, have to zoom in a bit, there we go. Uh, replace with After Effect composition, it's going to send it to After Effect. Import the background image you want to use, so here I just want a piece of sky, drag and drop here, put the image below the movie double click on the movie, select the roto brush tool, check that I'm more or less in the middle of the composition, mark the part I want to keep. So make sure you go along the edges so the program knows that this is the area you want to keep. It looks good, it, it has detected the edges properly. And this is also something that you have to be aware when you're filming. Try to have in the background something a bit uh, homogeneous. You can see here it's just gray and it's a bit darker than my main object. It helps a lot with the rotoscoping. And then I'm just gonna scroll through my, um, my clip a little bit to see uh, if the, the rotoscoping uh, stays on the object I want it to, to cut out. And you will see in the last uh, the last clip, uh, you will understand why I'm, I'm doing this now. Uh, because sometimes the program will not follow the edge. It will start to follow something different, like this line here. And then you have to correct it. So this is always a bit slow. Yes, tell me. Yes, absolutely. So the, the way this tool works is you, you can maybe see it now. It's, um, it's a round plus 
And I know there is a way to change the size of it, but uh, I have not found this. So if you can Google this and find out, but right now it's really small. Um, and if you hold Alt on your keyboard, it will turn into a minus. And this is to remove parts. So now I'm adding what I want to keep. And if you press minus, then you could just draw here in this area here and it will have the same effect. It will remove the, this background. <coughs> Sorry. I just would like to, pre to uh, say this is not coronavirus. I have a very nice hay fever at the minute from all the pollen from the trees. So I'm not infected, at least I think, maybe I am. But uh, yeah, beautiful moment of the year for everybody which has a uh, uh, hay fever from uh, tree pollen. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so it looks good. Now if I scroll back, you can see it's still, it's still following the, the shape uh, correctly. Um, I'm gonna say I'm happy with this. Uh, this I'm gonna say freeze, and then it's we're gonna have to wait a little bit again for the for the program to to freeze uh, this. If I go back to my editing, what can we do? Yeah, we can't do much. We're more or less done here. Um, what can I tell you about about Premiere? You have all your clips here. So even the sound file I've imported are now here. Even if I dragged it directly in the timeline, they're showing up here. And you can see here, I have my compositions. So they're the, the clips I have sent to, um, to uh, After Effects. They're showing up here. So you can, this is like a reference browser. You have everything. And this is my main timeline. This is the actual editing timeline I, I have here. So these are video clips. This is the timeline. And these are the linked clips in Adobe After Effects. And actually, I'm just going to rename this guy to something a little bit better because it's the name of my movie. So I'm going to call it Boathouse. So After Effects is still thinking. Um, something you can do and I haven't done on this movie is do color correcting and for this you can come in the color tab and you can uh, apply color correction on your clips and this is also a really good way to make your whole movie look much uh, better and this is something I'm gonna let you uh, search on, on, on Google and, and find out a little bit about yourself because it's a little bit more advanced, but you can, you can apply LUTs uh, to, your, uh, to your movie. LUTs are predefined color corrections. It's like someone has already uh, made the work of adjusting the color and the, the, the feeling of the, of the image. Uh, they for example, say, hey, the shadows should be a bit blue and this, the light part of the image should be a little bit uh, more yellow and uh, the skin tone should be a little bit more warm. And they've applied this effect and it's something that you can apply very quickly to, uh, to a movie. My advice on this with color correction is be subtle, super subtle. Don't try to go um, saturated or really dark. Be very, very light with it because it can very quickly uh, become overwhelming and extremely heavy. So be, be very subtle. Um, okay, so we're rendering this now. You can see now the, the program doing its, uh, its thing. It's going through each frame and it's checking that it's still following the the, the element correctly. Um, maybe I'm just going to go through some things that you can um, you can do uh, when you you do this this uh, movie process. So first of all, take references. Look at some movies. Look at some pic architecture pictures that you like, and put them on a screen next to you when you work. Print them. Have them around you so you can always look at a good picture and say, hey. I like how the shadows are in this photo or I like the atmosphere that this movie has. And while you work, come back to it and have a quick look at it. So you, your mind is always um, on, on a, on, has always a good reference to, to compare your work with and say, hey, what could I change to make this look good? Or what are the 
the little tricks which add a lot of uh, quality to the movie. Um, the second thing is uh, make a storyboard. Just quickly draw what you want to show. Basic framing. Is it a wide shot? Is it a narrow shot? Uh, what do I see in the background? Just so you get an idea. Um, find props. Look around your house. And maybe the box for the cardboard eggs uh, can be a good uh, table. Um, maybe I have some uh, eraser which I can use as a, a little, uh, a little uh, house in the background or um, you can um, really look around you and, and try to find a lot of objects that you can use in, in, the, in the movie. And then execute it. So use all the tricks I showed today. Use the water reflection. Use uh, a screen or a beamer in the background to show a background image. Uh, may, maybe try to film something at night and uh, use only electric light bulb to light your scene. Uh, use the sun. The sun is really good to light the scene. It makes really convincing uh, light. Look at this, how the, the lighting is interesting on this. You have this hard shadow from, the, from this uh, curve here and then it, you have this sun and you see the, the shadow of the cable on top of it. And here you have a bit of reflection from the water and this soft shadow going in. And the, here on the edge you have a little uh, bright element. So there is so much um, uh, information that are uh, that which looks really good and which is really quickly made with just a cardboard box. Okay, so now this is done. I can go back to uh, Premiere and um, uh, see that. Uh, oh yeah, we forgot to adjust the background. So I'm going to go back to After Effects, uh, close my layer uh, view again, come back here, and I'm going to adjust the background. I just want to see the sky here, so I'm going to select this guy. Take the mouse tool and then just drag my, my background like this, like something like, yeah, maybe I want to see a little piece of tree here for the composition. And you can see my edge is a bit rough again, so I'm going to come back to the movie, open the settings, effects, roto brush, roto brush mate, and then increase the feather to 30 so it's a little bit more uh, soft. And uh, I'm quite happy with this shot. I'm just going to hit save and actually, no, sorry, maybe I'm just going to make the background a little bit less saturated. The, the blue of the sky is a little bit too much for this. I'm just going to desaturate it a little bit. You see how it fits better with this almost black and white region here. And this is yellow, but it's a soft brown, soft yellow. So I want the sky to also be a little bit soft and actually maybe a little bit brighter like so. Okay, that's good. Okay, we're back in uh, in Premiere and it should update. There we go, it updated. Um, this shot doesn't need any editing in After Effects. Well, we actually already did it. And then the final shot here, we can do some uh, very quick uh, editing and we're going to do two things. So we're going to come here and say, open this in After Effects. Uh, first of all, I'm going to rotate it because it's not very straight. So I'm going to open the um, transform tab, say rotate, turn it a little bit until I think it's straight. Now I need to zoom in a little bit into the picture. So I'm going to take the zoom factor and increase it. So you click and you drag with your mouse. This looks okay. I'm going to import my background. So for this one, I have this photo, put it in here drag it below and then here I don't need to do a rotoscope on this because it's really not moving so I can just do a mask. So I'm just gonna deselect everything here, select the pen and then just click and do a quick mask on this and actually here I want this to be a straight line and then here I'm gonna follow this white cloth edge like this and close it and I'm going to come back to my video and say mate, for the mate I want the alpha, alpha inverted mate shape one which I just drew and boom I can see through it and if I play this clip it doesn't really matter because this is so still I don't need to do a rotoscoping so now it's also much faster for me so I'm just going to adjust the background now quick so I'm just going to say fit and uh, the backgrounds need rotation as well. There we go. 
uh, maybe it moves it's gonna move down a little bit and um, I think to be accurate it needs to be a bit smaller like so and then here it's important that you play a bit with the composition what are you gonna show are you gonna show here a lot of trees or nothing what what it doesn't need to be a realistic you're not trying to uh, be precise and show oh I see exactly this from here you're trying to make a picture which shows the something appealing in the concept of your project so if this window should just show this big view to the lake then make it like this and you show more the island and the lake and if this should show that you are on the side of the lake and you want to see this little house because it's important then drag it a bit more left so it's don't be don't have to be precise but look at the composition so I'm gonna say this is okay I'm gonna do my usual hue saturation effects onto this guy so desaturate it a little bit make it a little bit brighter uh, if this was taken with a real camera the outside would be super bright you could almost not see it but because we're doing magic we can we can have a good exposition inside and outside okay quite happy with this and then you saw I added a little myself here on the on the deck and uh, we're gonna do this now video this is it so I'm gonna bring this now directly into After Effects and you can see this is the video of me walking towards the um, uh, just looking out in the wall and I want to crop this so I'm just gonna take this this clip here and by doing this you can you can crop it I think no sorry wrong file it's this guy here at the top so I can crop it like this um, tack, yeah so it's quite long so I'm gonna zoom out can't zoom out okay yeah, like I told you, I don't know all the little tricks in After Effects. So if I want to make this shorter right now, I just have to do this very st stupid manually like this. So, okay, I like this start here and then, okay, that's good enough for me. So I'm going to put this like so, move everything against the first frame. Okay, <clears throat> and then now I need to rotoscope everything around me so again double click come in I'm just gonna check yeah okay so here now I want to say hey only use this clip from from here to here I think this should be long enough and uh, now I'm gonna use the rotoscope tool and say, okay, I wanna keep this. Uh, frame mismatch. Okay, so if you have this error, and I don't know why it's giving this error, uh, it's because the uh, frame rate is not uh, the same for all your clips. So. Uh, what you do is what it tells you here come to composition uh, composition settings and put 24 frame yeah it's 24 frames what do you want frame rate mismatch other footage fill aha no sorry the for some reason my composition is 24.0001 frame so i'm going to do this i don't know why there we go on it goes away it's very strange should be okay <clears throat> okay so again I'm gonna go like this select what I want to keep uh, it's not showing it why Oh, okay, yes, for some reason the whole composition was selected, so uh, I don't want this. And now I'm using the red tool to say what I don't want. So you can see I just go around the whole thing. 
well, actually, this is terrible. I'm just going to start over. So I'm going to close my layer here. Um, I'm going to remove this uh, roto effect from this layer and I'm going to reopen it and do it again. And I'm going to select this from the start here and the end, the end here, like so. Okay, and I'm going to try this again. So I come in the middle with my playhead and um, I'm going to select the Roto Brush tool and do this again. There we go. Okay, so now you see the, the problem. It has selected this part. So I'll just hold Alt on my keyboard, remove this. And then you can come here like so, a little bit more. Here, I'm going to add this. Good. And I'm going to say here, I don't want my arm to be like this. I want this in. So you see, I'm doing a bit of back and forth between what I want in and out. And I want the hand in. And actually here, I want this to be out. And I want to refine this. Okay. And my feet actually should be in. There we go, good enough. So now I'm gonna move a couple of frames forward and see if the Roto tool uh, keeps correctly track of me. So on the keyboard, it's the um, next page, no, page down key. If you don't have it, just click on the timeline like this. And you can see as I move forward, it works quite well. Ah, you see here, there's a problem. My, my hand is starting to be cropped away. So I'm going to come back and include it back in. And I'm doing this as a modification in the next frames. Huh? So the initial frame is this blue dot, and then I'm moving forward in time and I'm correcting a little bit the program and saying, hey, I want this to be like this. And you see, it's really having a hard time keeping my hand in. So yeah, I'm going to select more every time. There we go, that's pretty good. Ah. So this is a really long process and there is no way around it. You really have to do this for when you have errors like this, you have to do this for almost every frame. Yeah, you can see that this tool works well when the, the background and what you want to rotoscope have a good color separation or uh, intensity um, brightness separation. So if you film yourself <coughs> against a dark background or something green, you will have a much easier time doing this rotoscoping because the the program will uh, look at the at the difference of color and the difference of luminosity, and it will be much easier for it to do this. So I'm adding this in. I'm moving one frame forward. I'm adding this in, moving one frame forward, adding it in, moving one frame forward. Yeah, you have to do this now for every frame. It really doesn't pick it up. So this is a bit slow and tedious. And this is why I'm saying if you can start with um, still shots, because you can see already just now with a still shot, it's already a bit complicated. So imagine if you're moving and you have objects moving in front of what you want to rotoscope, it can become very quickly, very complex. And uh, we are not uh, special effect artists, we're architects. Okay. Okay, and then for the sake of today's tutorial, I'm just gonna say, hey, that's good enough. What happens if I move forward uh, quite a bit? So now it's gonna render this. Yeah, it's moving, but it's really slow. Yeah, you see now I'm taking my arm off, so it kind of works, it's kind of following it. Yeah, this is good, I'm happy with this. Looking good down here, a little bit of stone I can remove. Nope, too much. 
And then I'm going to move a little bit back and also look at here at the beginning. And this looks good when I have my arm crossed. It looks really, really good. It's, make, it's doing a good job with this shot. So I think this should, uh, should work. I'm not going to go more through this uh, rotoscoping to save a bit of time today. But you get the idea. You have to go from your initial point of reference um, sequentially backward and forward to make sure your rotoscoping is staying consistent and is not jumping all around. And then once you're happy with it, you when you look you go through it and it looks okay, and then you can uh, hit freeze and it's gonna make it final. So now I can hit freeze. Well, it's gonna take a while. So maybe what can we do? Uh, yeah, it's almost uh, almost done. If you have some questions, maybe you can you can ask them now. Um, I'm almost done now with the tutorial. So a couple more points I wanted to talk about. Um, make sure also you, you record an interesting soundtrack that tells something about your movie. Don't just leave it blank. It's And, and use sounds, use like some people talking in the background, use um, uh, the wind, uh, use, record your sound, uh, your feet walking on wood or walking on something hard uh, in the grass or like different materials because you can tell a lot with, uh, with sound. Yes. Yes. Yes, so the sound of the of the iPhone is this track here. It's the first uh, soundtrack, and I just muted it. Uh, and this is gonna disable, and then I can add my own recording here below and and do the little cuts and stuff. Yeah, and yes. And and now once you've created. Uh, composition in um, After Effects, you can even delete it like so. And you see now I have no more sound from the microphone. And I think there is a way, well, it's not I think, I know there there is a way to separate the sound from the video clip. So if you right click on it, You right click on it there should be a way to say hey i want to detach the audio from the um, from the video and then you can remove it but um, now it's stuck For the camera, most phones are good enough. Um, phones within the last three years take usually, most of them take 4K video, 1080 is fine as well, so it's HD. Um, try to keep the same camera for everything, this way you, ha you have already a consistent look. Um, and, and make sure the camera is very stable, that's important, because it breaks the illusion very quickly if the camera does tick, 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 and you have a little shake and then you're like oh wow this is really small or it doesn't it doesn't fit so there we go it's almost done Okay, so I'm gonna close my layer and go back to the comp and now I'm rotoscoped flying in the air. So I'm gonna take the mouse, the um, control guy and then I can move myself where I want. Always um, 
be aware that when you do this type of rotoscoping, it's easier to have things a bit out far away from the camera. For example, if you want a shot with uh, the camera is on the table and the first thing in the frame is maybe a cup of coffee, it's easier to cut out a cup of coffee than someone moving, for example. So also think when you're composing your shots, if you want someone moving, put them a little bit on the background. Uh, I think I'm a bit too big. So transform, scale, something like this. And then I'm gonna put myself here or maybe here works maybe better with the composition or just maybe center center yeah I like this huh and I'm still too big Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is just make myself again a bit less saturated, a bit less shiny because now I'm, I'm really popping in the, in the image. So I've added a hue saturation and I'm just going to desaturate myself and I'm going to do it until when I look at the picture, I can't really tell if this is added or not. Like if I look with my eyes a bit squint like this, I, I see something very homogeneous. Huh? If uh, if you do, well, now what's going on? Yeah, so it has to be very blended, let's say. Okay, so this is the final edit. I'm gonna save this, go back to uh, Premiere. And now we can see the final shot looks good. The last thing we would do, uh, but I'm not going to do it today, is color correcting and uh, making it look, uh, look look better. And this could be maybe for a next tutorial, something that we could uh, could have a look. What's good about color correcting and uh, the uh, LUTs is that it gives an overall homogeneous look at your movie and it blends all the different things together. Um, so now, once this is done, I can hit return to render the, the clips. Hmm. What did I do? Ah, okay. So this blue lines are the range of your movie. So you want this one to be here at the beginning and this one to be here at the end and not like this. Otherwise you'll have a bl uh, black element at the end. And then hit uh, return and it's gonna render um, the, the frames which uh, have not been rendered. When you film, try to also uh, film just enough. Don't be, don't film really short clips. Film a little bit more so you can cut and choose the good bits. But don't film for 30 minutes because you're obviously going to take a lot of room on your hard drive and you might run out of space and then it's really hard to manage the, the space in your hard drive. So try to film little bits of 20 seconds, 30 seconds max. Uh, so when you're editing, you can still have a little bit of room, but don't uh, leave your camera running for, for, for five minutes, unless you're doing a time lapse or something else like this. Um, some phones also have a slow motion feature, and this can be really good if you want to uh, uh, show some... Usually things, when they're smaller, they move a bit faster. And if you film them in slow motion, you, you bring them back to a real-time, big-scale object. So, for example, the water moving in a glass, if you look at it from really up close, it moves really fast. And if you s film it with a high-speed camera, so in slow motion, it will look much more realistic when it will move slowly. You see how, if you think about the sea, the waves are moving very slowly like this, or the lake. And it's the same if you film uh, water at a very small scale. You can get back this, this effect of the, the water moving. Um, what looks really good as well is you, when you film things really close up and you get a really nice reflection on the object you're, you're filming. So if you film water really close from it, you just get the reflection on the water. And it doesn't matter that you're not uh, by the lakeside, you can just put some water and, and film it really up close and you get a really nice reflection. You see how here the water is basically like a mirror. So what you can do is take a, a mirror put water on it, try to fill it up. So maybe you have to put the mirror inside of a plastic bucket and then you film it and then you 
can create some really realistic water because you, you see this water is just like a mirror. It, it looks like there is a mirror under the surface of the water. I don't see under under the water here. So you, you can use all these tricks to make your, your uh, shots uh, more interesting. And uh, here we go. So the movie is, uh, is finished. We have these shots like this. We have this shot of the food drying on the hot concrete. Uh, we have this shot with me <laughs> on the on the edge here, kind of telling a story, looking outside of the of the marina. Uh, it's not perfect. There are some mistakes, but it's good enough for now. Now we want to export the movie, so you come to File, uh, Export Media, and you want to select the format H.264, which is a compression algorithm uh, for the movie. Um, and then you have basically nothing else here to to be to worry about and then just hit export it's going to compress the file into one uh, movie file which then you can uh, show and upload to uh, to moodle or something else okay this is it i hope you uh, learned something i hope this will be useful for the final critic um, that you'll be able to maybe present your project with uh, with a little animated uh, movie it is not certain exactly how you're gonna be required to do it but i think this is a good tool to have in your uh, arsenal of uh, possibilities uh, because it's different every if you make a movie like this, every movie is different and has a very strong character at that atmosphere. In the future, uh, if there is enough request, I might do a tutorial about how to make a movie with uh, rendering uh, software. So how to render the movie in Cinema 4D and then compose it and all this stuff. Um, but I think this method is very powerful keep it short, keep it 20 seconds maximum. Nobody wants to watch three minutes of camera flying through a 3D model, showing nothing. Like really, before you start, put your ideas down, make a small list, a small storyboard. What do you want to show? What is important in your project? And you don't have to show everything, just some key elements. We can see everything on the plans and on the facade and the drawings you do. On the movie, show what the plans can't tell show the atmosphere, show is it uh, very sunny inside or is it more shadowy, uh, can I see outside really well or are the windows very small and you only see a couple of elements. So try to think about these things when you make this movie and, and, and really show key elements. All right, that's, that's it for me for today. If you have questions, I'm going to stay in the video chat and you can ask, uh, ask them to me. I'm available the whole